What's up? It's Kyle with another geography video, this time comparing Northern and Southern California. And there's a big time sibling rivalry that's been going on between these two halves of the state since statehood. And it's largely because of the shape of the state. It's very long north-south and very narrow east-west. And if California were situated along the east coast, it would stretch from Hartford, Connecticut, down to Charleston, South Carolina. So it goes a little bit farther north and maybe not as far south as you might think. And in fact, if you live in the northernmost parts of the state, you live closer to Canada than you do to Mexico. And if you live in LA or San Diego, you live a lot closer to Texas than you do to Oregon. So in this video, I'm going to take a look at all kinds of different categories and compare the two. So I'll be looking at cities and national parks and natural areas and the climate and the beaches and the agriculture, companies headquarters there, the GDP and the economy, cultural aspects like food, music, and sports. So a wide range of categories so we can finally get down to the bottom of this definitively which half of the state is better? Oh, it's Northern California, man. Versus Southern California, dude. Okay, and at the risk of sounding like a jerk, I'm gonna go ahead and say that I'm a pretty good authority on this subject. I'm from one of those counties in the middle of the state that wouldn't be considered either Northern or Southern. I have family in the Bay Area, and I lived in Los Angeles while I go into college, so I'm not inherently biased towards one or the other, so I'm gonna just do it from a very objective standpoint to compare these two halves of the state. I'm going to start off by comparing cities in Northern and Southern California. So I'm going to start off with the big one, San Francisco versus Los Angeles. San Francisco is one of the most exciting and dynamic cities in the country. I love it. I've been there a million times, but it might not be the city you think it is. And I live in the South and you can imagine what people in the South have never been there think it is. And they're usually pretty wrong. So there are some things about the city that you might find surprising. For one, it's the financial capital of the Western US. Only New York has more financial and bank stuff going on than San Francisco. One of my favorite things about the city is how quickly the neighborhoods change. You can walk for a couple of miles and the neighborhoods will change several times and they'll be a lot different from the one right next to it. So when you have a pedestrian friendly city where it's very compact, you're gonna get that. That really is one of the coolest aspects of the city. Los Angeles, on the other hand, is quite a bit different. And a lot of folks back east think the two might be pretty similar, but they're actually quite dichotomous. Whereas San Francisco is the single most pedestrian friendly city in the country, LA is the single least pedestrian friendly city in the country. So people love their cars. There's a big time car culture there. Because people spend so much time in their cars because the traffic is so bad. The city is so spread out. I mean, you can't possibly walk anywhere. So whereas everybody in San Francisco is walking, riding their bike or riding the bus, everybody in LA is driving. There are some great neighborhoods in LA as well, but of course the difference is you have to drive between them because they're just too spread out. But LA also tends to be a little bit more of a rushed type city. People tend to be more of a hurry there as opposed to San Francisco, which is just you know much more laid back. Outward appearances are much more important in LA than San Francisco. You gotta look good, you gotta dress good, and you gotta show off your money. In San Francisco, it's almost looked down upon to flaunt your money. There's plenty of money in the city, but people don't tend to flaunt it as much. In LA, oh, oh no, they're flaunting it. If you got the money in LA, you're flaunting it. I had a great time living in LA while I was in college, and one of my favorite things about the city is just the party scene. There's a much better party scene in LA than San Francisco. Not that you can't get wild in San Francisco, but there's a lot more of that going on in LA. A wider variety of the kind of clubs and bars and nightlife you're going to see there, so it's much more like New York in that regard. But ultimately, I got to go with San Francisco on this one. It's my personal favorite big city in the entire country. And, you know, I like LA. It just doesn't quite compete with San Francisco. And it's not just me that says that either, because I've never once met somebody who's not from California that's been to both LA and San Francisco that likes LA better. So I'm sure that person exists. I just never met him. So I got to go with Northern California on this one. Next up, I'll be comparing Silicon Valley to Orange County. And these two places are pretty similar in that they sit right next to San Francisco and LA respectively. Orange County is kind of like the little brother to LA and San Jose and the Silicon Valley is kind of like the fraternal twin to San Francisco. Orange County is basically a suburb with 3 million people and because it's so big, it has a lot of the same problems that other big cities have. So a lot of traffic, a lot of congestion, just people everywhere. It's got a lot in common with Los Angeles, being that it sits right next to it. A lot of people commute from one to the other and have a lot of the same hustle and bustle as LA and a lot of the things with outward appearances being really important and flaunting the wealth. It has a lot of really nice beaches there. Newport Beach and Laguna Beach are really nice towns. Huntington Beach is well known for its surfing scene and Anaheim is the home of Disneyland. So you have a lot of cool things going on in Orange County, but there really isn't anything too terribly historic. It hasn't been you know, developed for too terribly long. And as the name implies, at one point it was pretty much all orange orchards. Now it's just all built up urban area. When talking about Silicon Valley, it's important to note first that it isn't really a valley. It's just kind of a nickname for the area. So 
when you talk about Silicon Valley, you're basically talking about Santa Clara County, uh, primarily the city of San Jose, which is actually quite a bit larger than San Francisco. And shocking surprise, Silicon Valley is most known for all the high-tech stuff. So you look at all the major high-tech companies, there's a pretty good chance it's located in Santa Clara County. So this is an extremely important part of the country in terms of all this high-tech stuff we got going on. But the flip side is that it's really boring. San Jose is a really, really boring city. Not a lot of excitement going on, but you know, with all the computer geeks and engineers, what do you expect? So overall, I got to give the nod to Silicon Valley on this one. Both Orange County and Silicon Valley do what they want to do well, but what Orange County wants to do is be like LA, and it doesn't quite do it as well as LA does, whereas Silicon Valley kind of forged their own path to be something quite different than San Francisco, and it's something that we all rely upon every day. So got to give again the nod of Northern California on this one. The next cities I'll be comparing are Sacramento and San Diego. And these are both very agreeable cities. So if you like big cities, you're gonna have a hard time coming up with something to hate about these two. Sacramento is the capital of California with a metropolitan area population of about two and a half million. So with it being the capital of the largest state in the country, of course, the state government is gonna be the largest employer in the city. It's one of the oldest Anglo settlements in the Western US and it's at the confluence of the Sacramento and American rivers, which is right downstream from where all the gold rush stuff was going on in the 1840s. And there's kind of a wild west outpost image going on there. And there's a really cool old west area that's been well preserved right downtown. Some really cool history in the city. Arguably the best thing about Sacramento is that it's nicknamed the city of trees. And it's called that because there are more trees per capita in Sacramento than anywhere else in the US, which is kind of surprising considering how dry California is, but it's really cool because whenever you're walking around Sacramento, there's always a canopy of trees above you. San Diego is also a really nice city with a metropolitan area population of about 3.1 million. And it offers a lot of the same great things that LA offers, the climate, the beaches and all that sunshine, but doesn't have all the negative things that LA has. So of course there's gonna be traffic and crime and congestion and pollution there, but it's nowhere near as bad as LA. So you have a lot of the benefits of LA without all the horrible things. And it's also much more laid back. It doesn't have the same hustle and bustle kind of going on that you have in LA. So it's almost like Southern California scenery with Northern California mentality. You've got the world famous San Diego Zoo, the Gash Lamp Historic District right downtown, the Mission District, the Hillcrest area, which is really funky near the San Diego State University campus. So a lot of cool things going on in San Diego, a lot of cool things to see. There's a wide range of really nice beach towns in the San Diego area. Everything from the super luxurious, ultra rich La Jolla down to the bungalow filled, more historic and laid back Coronado Beach, the funky enclaves of Pacific Beach and Ocean Beach where you've got the dog beach where the dogs are surfing. How cool is that? Sorry, buddy, there's no beach for you. So overall, I'm gonna give a nod to San Diego on this one. Even though I love Sacramento, I just love San Diego a lot more. It's one of the best big cities in the country. A lot of cool things going on there. And a lot of folks think it might be kind of like LA, but smaller because they're pretty close to each other. But if you've been to LA and thinking that San Diego might be the same, it's not. It's actually very different. So I like San Diego a lot. That's why I'm giving the nod to Southern California in this category. Next in line for comparison are Santa Barbara and Santa Cruz. These two places are pretty similar in that they're medium-sized cities along the coast that are about an hour and a half away from the much larger metro areas of the Bay Area and LA, yet remain separate and distinct. Santa Barbara is about an hour and a half or so west of Los Angeles, right along the coast. It's a really nice place. The downtown's great, a lot of cool restaurants and shops and boutiques kind of stuff. A lot of it's really upscale and expensive. And overall, Santa Barbara does have a really expensive upscale feel to it. And it's you know, got a lot of celebrities that live there. It's got that kind of Southern California mentality of outward appearances and flaunting your wealth being important. And there's plenty of wealth being flaunted in Santa Barbara. But it's also got a lot of great history to it. Really nice mission, some cool bungalows and some wonderful beaches there. But it isn't quite as hustle and bustle and it's much more laid back than LA. So it's really cool, really nice weather all year round. Santa Barbara is a pretty cool spot to be. Santa Cruz is about an hour and a half or so south of San Francisco, right along the coast. And it also has a pretty cool downtown, some nice shops and boutiques there. It's the kind of place where record shops and bookshops still mean something. It's got a really funky vibe and it's a lot different than Santa Barbara in terms of its feel. Earlier, I was stating how people in the South often have these ideas about San Francisco and what it might be like based on stereotypes, and they're usually pretty wrong, but Santa Cruz is where you actually will see all those stereotypes. It's got all the things you expect to find in a California city. It has all the hippies and weirdos and social outcasts and anarchists. It's the top surfing city in the state. Skateboarding is huge there, with Santa Cruz skateboards being a well-known brand. It just marches to the beat of its own drum, so whatever you're doing, they want to do it differently. 
Every single city in the country has that same shopping center with the Bed Bath & Beyond and the Best Buy and the Home Depot and the Walmart and the PetSmart. They're all the exact same. I could take a picture of that shopping center. You wouldn't know if it was in Alaska, Hawaii, Boston, or Miami. You know, you could be in San Francisco or Manhattan. It still has those same big box stores. It's the exact same in the entire country except Santa Cruz. So for that reason, I got to give the nod to Santa Cruz and Northern California on this one. It's kind of like the last mating pair of Bengal tigers. You have to keep them alive. You can't let them go extinct. Santa Cruz is the last thing we got in the entire country that's a holdout from all this conformity we have in the rest of the U.S. So love it or hate it, you have to at least appreciate the fact that Santa Cruz exists. I love it for that reason, even though I'd never want to live there. Okay, so now that I've talked about the cities, I'm going to start talking about some of the natural aspects of the state. So we're talking about the climate, the national parks, and the beaches. Southern California is pretty well known for having just about the best climate in the world. And people that don't live in California will say things like, but they don't have seasons. I like seasons. No, no, you don't. It's been a couple years living somewhere where the weather was always nice. You won't care about seasons anymore. And besides, LA has four seasons. Nice, really nice, really, really nice, and sometimes rainy. And I saw a bit by comedian Lewis Black once where he's saying how the, you know, the easiest job in the world is being a weather forecaster in San Diego. It's going to be nice. And so that's just kind of the way it is there. It's just always nice. And of course, a desert isn't nice. It's going to have really hot summers and really cold winters. But the vast majority of people in Southern California live on the coast. The weather is nice. It's great. Northern California's climate is no slouch either. Along the coast, it never really gets hot or really gets that cold either. But of course, it's going to be chillier than Southern California. It can be more gray and overcast during the morning before the clouds and fog burn off in the afternoon. But the coast of Northern California is actually the chilliest summers of anywhere in the contiguous U.S., even chillier than Oregon or Washington. Mark Twain has a famous quote saying the coldest winter I've ever been in was the summer in San Francisco. And, you know, of course he was joking, but there is some seriousness to that and that, you know, it can be pretty chilly in San Francisco during the summertime. So if you're along the coast, not just Northern, but also Southern California, the warmest time of the year is the fall, not the summer. But let's get real. When comparing climate, no one's going to beat Southern California. It's the best climate in the world. So this is an easy win for Southern California. Next, I'll be comparing the national parks and the scenic beauty of each half of the state. And in Northern California, you've got Yosemite, Mount Lassen, and Redwoods National Park. You've got Mount Shasta, Lake Tahoe, and all those beautiful national forests of the interior north and those really beautiful rocky beaches along the coast. In Southern California, you're talking about Joshua Tree National Park, the Mojave Desert, the Salton Sea, and some of the national forest areas in the mountain ranges of the south. I really like desert. I think they offer some very subtle scenic beauty, and I like visiting deserts of all types. But just like with the climate, there really is no comparison here. You can't compare Southern California's scenic beauty to Northern California with Yosemite and the Redwoods. This is just an easy win for Northern California in the terms of national parks and scenic beauty. And the last comparison in the nature category is going to be the beaches. And Southern California is well known for those big, wide, sandy beaches where you know, it's great for sunbathing and showing off your hot bod and doing the beach activities, beach volleyball and all that kind of stuff. So the beaches in Southern California are wonderful. They're much more like the ones in Florida where it's about being out in the sun and enjoying the beach activities. Northern California also has some really nice beaches, but for different reasons. They're much more scenic with that rocky coastline and those big cliffs. And But the big difference is you're not going to be going there to sunbathe. In fact, you're probably wearing a sweatshirt and jeans. So it's going to be pretty chilly, perhaps even overcast, but you're going there more to enjoy the scenery and not so much the beach activities. But most people think about going to the beach or thinking about going to a sandy type beach where they can lay out there in the sun, do some water activities, go swimming out in the ocean. So I got to give the easy win to Southern California in the beach category. The next few categories I'm going to be discussing are the economic ones. So we're talking about the GDP, the companies that are headquartered there, and the agriculture. California's overall GDP is about $2.8 trillion, and it's roughly 50-50 where it's between Northern and Southern California. Northern California has a much more diversified economy with, again, San Francisco being the, you know, the most important financial city outside of New York. You have all the high-tech stuff going on in the Bay Area. You just have a much more diversified economy, so the GDP is coming from a lot more angles. Southern California's economy isn't as diversified as Northern California's, and it's really heavily dependent on the entertainment industry. You might be like, well, Hollywood isn't really that important, but 
It really is. You look at a movie, the credits at the end, you might have heard of five people in the cast, but all those other hundreds of people you've never heard of, the set designers, the makeup, costumes, sound, lighting people, the, the guys who will rent you the old car for the movie that takes place in the 50s kind of stuff. So there's a lot of things that really go on that's important for the economy with the entertainment industry. And you might not think entertainment is really that terribly important, but you don't want to know what it's like to live in a world with no entertainment. But with all that being said, Northern and Southern California have about the same GDP, but Southern California's population is much higher. So for 24 million people to have the same GDP as 14 million means that Northern California gets the easy win in the GDP category. The next category I'm going to talk about are the companies that are headquartered in each half of the state. And each half has a ton of huge, really important companies for the U.S. economy. Southern California is, of course, going to be dominated by all the movie studios and record companies and the things going on with the TV and movie stuff, but there's a lot more going on in Southern California than that. So I'm going to have to read this list because there are far too many to memorize. In Southern California, you've got DirecTV, Edmonds, JD Power, K-Swiss, Magellan Navigation, Northrop, Skechers, SpaceX, THQ, Ticketmaster, Trader Joe's, Activision, Blizzard, Disney, Zamboni Ice Machines are made in LA, Western Digital, Qualcomm, HealthNet, Farmers Insurance, Mattel Toys. So that's a lot of big time major companies headquartered in Southern California. As I was stating before, Northern California's economy is a little more diversified than Southern. There's a lot of stuff going on there that isn't just the high tech stuff. Of course, you're gonna think of the high tech stuff first, specifically with Google and Apple. These are just you know the two biggest corporations in the world, but there is a lot more going on than just Google and Apple. So brace yourself. This is quite the list. In Northern California, you've got Chevron, Solar City, URS, Dolby, Electronic Arts, Lucasfilm, Netflix, Pandora, Pixar, Sega of North America, Sony of North America, Charles Schwab, FICO, Franklin Templeton, PayPal, Square, Visa, Wells Fargo, Airbnb, Craigslist, Dropbox, eBay, Facebook, LinkedIn, Lyft, Pinterest, Quora, Salesforce, Twitter, Uber, Wikimedia, Yahoo, Yelp, Netgear, Avaya, Asus, Cisco, Fitbit, HP, Hitachi, Logitech, Monster, NVIDIA, Philips Lighting, SanDisk, THX, Adobe, GitHub, McAfee, Mozilla, Oracle, SAP, Symantec, Gap, Marmot, North Face, Tesla, Clorox, GoPro. I mean, come on, man. That's the most ridiculous list of companies you're going to hear headquartered in just one part of a state. This is an easy win for Northern California. And the last category about economics I'll be discussing is the agriculture. And both Northern and Southern California grow a lot of crops, and they're both really important in terms of the overall agriculture in the U.S. Northern California is the top growing area for asparagus, lettuce, broccoli, artichokes, tomatoes, celery, cauliflower, strawberries, raspberries, walnuts, peaches, onions, and cantaloupe. So that's a lot of big time ag going on in the northern part of the state. Southern California is a top growing area for carrots, peppers, avocados, lemons, figs, dates, and almonds. They also grow a lot of tomatoes, asparagus, and lettuce, and strawberries there, but not quite as much as Northern California. So because Southern California is mostly built up urban area or open desert, you just can't really grow as much there. So Northern California gets the easy win in the agricultural department. And the last few categories I'm going to be discussing have to do with the cultural aspects. So I'll be talking about the food musical artists from each half of the state, and the sports teams. My personal favorite dish to originate for Northern California is the clam chowder and the sourdough bread bowl. And San Francisco is pretty well known for its sourdough bread in general. And because San Francisco was the port of entry for so many East Asian immigrants, you have a lot of the East Asian cuisine that became popularized in the U.S. through Northern California. So you think of Chinese food. It first got popular from San Francisco. And of course, what we eat is Chinese food in the U.S. It isn't really authentic Chinese food, but it's still really good. And also with the Japanese immigrants, you had a lot of sushi. So sushi became a popular thing in the U.S. because of Northern California. And it's also where you had the beginning of the vegan and vegetarian type diets. Hey, man, can I get the tofu and bean sprout sandwich with a side of cantaloupe, please? With Southern California being so health conscious now, it's surprising to learn that three of the most important aspects of fast food all originated from there. McDonald's started in L.A., and we all know where that went. In-N-Out Burger is a California staple, and they started doing the drive through Bob's Big Boy in Burbanks invented the huge hamburger. Before then, it was just kind of like small little hamburgers, but since Bob's Big Boy, we've now got double cheeseburgers, triple cheeseburgers, and all kinds of giant things going on. So you also have the French dip sandwich, which originated in L.A. It has nothing to do with France. It has to do with a guy that was named France. But anyway, you know, a lot of dead cow on the plate in L.A., and I love me some dead cow way more than bean sprouts and tofu. Southern California with the easy win here.
Now I'm going to talk about some of the musical acts that come from each half of the state. And when you think about what became pop music, it all pretty much came from the South. It all started with the blues that led to jazz and country and bluegrass and R&B and soul. But once it got established as what we know as pop music today in the 1950s, it was primarily the California bands that really took it to the next level. Going way back to the 60s, you've got the Beach Boys and the Doors coming out of L.A. You've got country music legend Merle Haggard coming out of Bakersfield. In the 70s, you had classic rock legends, the Eagles, and my personal favorite band of all time, Steely Dan. In the 80s, you had a lot more of the hard rock and glam rock stuff like Guns N' Roses, Motley Crue, and Van Halen. Also coming out of L.A. in the 80s, you had the Red Hot Chili Peppers, Weird Al Yankovic, and the greatest heavy metal band of all time, Slayer. In the 90s, you saw the rise of gangster rap with Ice Cube, Dr. Dre, and Snoop Dogg leading the way. A lot of alternative acts coming out of Southern California, Stone Temple Pilots, Beck, Weezer, No Doubt, Sublime, Offspring. So a lot of great stuff coming out of the 90s as well. In the early 2000s, you had the Black Eyed Peas, Queens of the Stone Age, and Linkin Park. In the past decade, you've had Marquez Houston, Robin Thicke, Ty Dolla Sign, Tyler the Creator, Aloe Black, Ab Soul, and Kendrick Lamar. So there's still great stuff coming out of Southern California. And there's been no shortage of great musical acts that come out of Northern California as well. The San Francisco bands of the 1960s really took rock and roll to the next level where it went from short poppy songs and songs as more about the music, guitar solos and jamming out, most famously the Grateful Dead. You also had Creed and Clearwater Revival who, along with the Grateful Dead, took country music and mixed it with rock and roll and that was pretty novel for that time. From the 70s, you had classic rock legends Carlos Santana, the Doobie Brothers, Steve Miller Band, and Journey. I don't care what people say, Journey is badass. From the 80s, you've got the greatest punk band of all time, the Dead Kennedys, heavy metal legends, Metallica, hip-hop legend, Too Short. In the 90s, you got really innovative bands, Faith No More and Primus. So a lot of stuff coming out of Northern California. And a good theme with these artists that there's a lot of innovation, a lot of things that were done for the first time started with some of these Northern California acts. But I've got to give a nod to Southern California in the music category. This, the list of artists goes on and on and on. So big win for SoCal on this one. And lastly, I'm going to compare the sports teams. And full disclosure here, I do root for the Northern California teams, but I'm only counting total championships here, so there won't be any opinions. For Northern California, the 49ers have five Super Bowl championships and the Raiders have two when playing in Oakland. The Giants have three World Series championships and the Oakland A's have four. The Golden State Warriors have four NBA championships. And these guys, nothing. These guys, nothing. But there we go. A lot of championships for the Northern California teams. For Southern California, the Raiders have a Super Bowl championship when playing in L.A., the Dodgers have five World Series championships. The Anaheim Angels have one. The Los Angeles Kings have two frickin' Stanley Cups. And the Anaheim Ducks have one. And the Lakers have 11 NBA championships. So as much as it pains me to say this, Southern California gets the slam dunk victory in the sports category. Pun intended. But it's only because of the Lakers. You add it all up, and the winner is Northern California. With the economy, the company's headquartered there, the GDP, the agriculture of the cities and the national parks, that's just too much for Southern California. But Southern California, don't worry. The weather is really nice, and those beach bodies are beautiful to look at. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, please give me a thumbs up to let me know you approve. And if you're interested in stuff about road tripping across the U.S., some nerdy geography stuff, or just some stuff about travel, check out my channel and please subscribe. But yeah, thanks for watching. Geography King signing out. Getting hella hungry for some tri-tip.